Well, summer has wound down and school has started up again and it's time to get back in the rhythm of these video blog posts. And This week we're jumping in with a look at 10 emerging education and instructional technologies that all educators should really be aware of. So in this year's look at 10 top technologies in the education and instructional uh, field, I've shifted the focus more to emerging technologies. Last year when we looked at this, uh, we were bringing technologies that had become more prevalent. They had emerged in recent years. Uh, but this year I'm specifically looking at those that have both become uh, more prevalent in the last year, but I think are best positioned to really have an impact on engaging students and improving learning outcomes in the coming years. So let's go ahead and get into it. So first and foremost is the flipped classroom. Now those of you who've been paying attention to Emerging Ed Tech and following us for a while here know that this is certainly a passion of mine. Uh, I wrote this spring about this, the idea of uh, is reverse instruction or the flipped classroom kind of education technology's perfect storm. Uh, I, I do feel that it is. Um, and of course, you know, this is not a technology in itself, but it's rather a, uh, a way to use technology in teaching. And I think it's just such a great uh, use of technology and has such potential. And while I'm not advocating by any means that everybody go and flip all their, their course content, uh, I certainly think all educators should be aware of the concept and should consider giving it a try to see where and how it might fit into their instructional process. Um, you know, there's been a lot of attention to this in the media, a lot of news stories about um, schools and classes, teachers that are doing this. Uh, also, this great book came out this year, this Flip Your Classroom book from Bergman and Sams. It's a great resource and really um, continues to uh, advocate and expand on the, uh, the whys, the hows, the benefits of doing this. And uh, so, uh, certainly I think a uh, very important technology to be paying attention to. Next on the list we have a technology that has just taken the world by storm and education has uh, been no different. Uh, the Apple iPad has taken uh, the, the floundering tablet uh, niche as a product from uh, something that couldn't get off the ground to something that has just exploded and they really have kind of established the niche and now there's a number of competitive products coming along and uh, I think it's only going to continue to uh, to grow um, how these tools are used in education. Uh, here on this site um, posts like 15 favorite iPad apps is selected by teachers and other posts such as uh, in fact, we see here under the popular post using the iPad as a digital whiteboard, uh, this Apple TV one which relates to the iPad, a unique classroom and teaching organizer app for the iPad. These are by far the most popular posts on the site. This single topic draws uh, about 30% of the readership. Uh, people just love this thing and for a lot of good reason. It makes a lot of sense. It works very well for students and it's really something you need to be uh, considering, uh, learning a about. Um, if you can get your hands on one if you haven't already and start to get exposed to how this thing differs from regular computing devices and uh, what it brings to education, uh, I think you're going to appreciate it a, a great deal. Next we're going to move on to smartphones. Uh, I think this is just such an under leveraged tool. Now of course it's, it's controversial. There's a lot of folks who feel like it's a distraction. They don't want them in the classrooms. But then there are others who are embracing them and the potential for their use. Uh, it's a great tool for responding, doing things like using Twitter, um, participating in polls, and there's a lot of folks out there thinking about how best to leverage this. Uh, here's a recent post we put up uh, with 10 resources for getting the most out of using cell phones in the school. Uh, prior to that, we had done a post about uh, specifically about text messaging assignments. And uh, that was part of what led to this this passion for the idea. Uh, instructors who came to me and said, this is how students are communicating. And why aren't we doing more with it? And I think we should all be asking ourselves that question. The next technology on our list is the gamification of education. The idea of rewards and badges and gaming mechanics uh, has, like many of these other ideas, really just kind of taken off uh, from my perspective in the last year. Uh, we had a, a great post on it not too long ago discussing the cognitive, social, and emotional learning benefits. And it's a good place to uh, to 
stop and take a look and think about it. Uh, the Khan Academy is embracing this idea within uh, what they're doing and just so many organizations are. It's coming up more and more often. Um, Mark Milleron brought it up in his Campus Technology 2012 uh, the keynote delivery and it just it makes a lot of sense. There's a great post here too about uh, tailoring the classroom of the future with the fabric of the past, speaking to how this, this concept of rewards has, has been around a long time and makes a lot of sense to, to apply within the educational context and I think we're just going to see more and more of that coming up as uh, the coming years go by. Number five on my list, and these really aren't in any particular order, although I, I guess I probably did go with those that I feel a little more passionately about towards the top of the list, but uh, they're not specifically intended to be in a ranked order. So number five on the list, the emergence of free online courses and the move towards providing credit and credentialing for them. This is just blown up. I mean, you can't miss the mention of MOOCs in the ed tech media if you pay any attention to it, and the education media in general. And uh, while MOOCs are not the only way, and a, a MOOC again being a massively open online course, and there's a, uh, a nice article about it here if you want to come out and uh, learn a little bit more about that. Uh, and they're not the only way to deliver free content, and not all MOOCs are free. Um, but there's some really interesting things going on, especially in the last few months. There's a lot of moves to say, well, can we provide credit? Can we credential these things? Uh, so, for example, I cited two articles that came out this week that um, are, uh, you know, kind of cite some of the groundbreaking things that are happening in this area. And uh, yes, this is obviously much more applicable towards higher ed. It's really about higher ed, but it's, you know, helps to be aware of this uh, at the high school level. And it's going to be interesting to see how it plays out in the coming years. And next on our list, we have a one-to-one -one device, or BYOD, which is Bring Your Own Device Initiatives. And of course, uh, they both have the same ultimate spirit, the idea that if we want students to be able to leverage technology, they need to have a device to do it with. And uh, whether your school can afford to provide laptops or tablets on a one-to-one -one basis, or you need to go the way of Bring Your Own Device, this is these are ways to accomplish it. Now, this summer, I put a post out about a uh, the, the idea that BYOD is a bad idea. It uh, got a lot of um, responses. There was a lot of controversy about it. Uh, it's not black and white by any means, but I have come around to the idea that if you approach this appropriately and have the right classroom objectives in mind, you can certainly get some real gains from BYOD. But it's, you know, it's, it's uh, I've got a sticky uh, points in terms of you know, different students having different qualities of devices, different capabilities in particular, and uh, some real trouble in terms of supporting these things can be very challenging. But uh, the bottom line is, uh, if you think it out carefully, you can certainly get some um, some real benefits out of it. And this concept of getting a device in everybody's hands is one you cannot ignore if you're considering uh, and focused on education technologies and leveraging them to enhance student learning. All right, my next recommendation in the top 10 emerging education technologies to be aware of are these student response systems. And this is really kind of a category of applications. There's polling applications. There's new tools out there like lecture tools and learning catalytics. And the idea behind all of these is that they provide for interactivity within the classroom in a synchronous manner. And there's some really fun things going on here. I mean, the idea of student response systems has been around for quite a while, but what's, what's emerging is the concept of making more of these kinds of things uh, accessible from any device rather than proprietary clickers, uh, and uh, a lot of evolution in the types of applications and what they're doing, and I look forward to covering that further here uh, before long. So I saw lecture tools at Campus Technology 2012. It was really fascinating and that there's more of these types of applications coming out and I think we're going to see them become more and more meaningful in terms of engaging students uh, both in and during the classroom activity and quite possibly online as well. And next we have cloud apps. Now we're all hearing about the cloud, the cloud, the cloud. You know, I mentioned here that things like YouTube and Google search have been popular cloud apps for, for ages. Uh, but they're not often thought of that way. But there's been a real explosion in things like Dropbox and Evernote, uh, which are really 
going towards the idea that people have more and more different devices. They have a smartphone, they might have a tablet, they might have a computer at work, a laptop, and they want to be able to get to some of their content from any of those devices at any time, and that's where cloud apps can really shine. So with Dropbox, you can have files in one place and they synchronize to these different devices. With Evernote, you're accessing notes that synchronize to the different devices. And this is becoming more and more meaningful and it's showing up more and more often in top 10 lists and top uh, you know, top whatever 15, 20 uh, lists from teachers about their favorite apps and tools. Uh, and this is just one example of that. So here we have uh, specifically Evernote and Dropnote were uh, the top one and two in the 15 favorite iPad apps selected by teachers uh, in a survey we did here earlier this year. And rounding out the list, we have Open Educational Resources and Learning Analytics, Open Educational Resources, are you know, it, this idea has been growing slowly the momentum has been building slowly for years now and as the quantity and quality of content out there uh, becomes more available and better understood th the potential for this to really have an impact grows uh, there's this can really change the nature of how we deliver educational resources and costs which is huge uh, and we just we can't ignore it and I only hope to see that it really does continue to to grow and get leveraged more and more by educators across the world and last but not least is learning analytics uh, another uh, concept that's been around it's kind of coming out of infancy uh, but we're beginning to see more and more of this uh, being incorporated into educational tools um, and it really provides the opportunity to give teachers better access to information about what students are doing and where they need help the most. Uh, here we have an article about how learning analytics are being used in education. A great way to come out and learn a little bit more about this. And um, we also explored Khan Academy's use of learning data and learning analytics. So uh, one more of the technologies that really holds the potential to enhance learning outcomes and to ultimately help deliver the, the promise of education technology that has frustrated so many of us. Uh, but many of these technologies, I think we're seeing a, at a quicker rate than ever, these things are coming to maturity and really able to, to make a difference when they're leveraged well. Uh, I hope you'll come out to the site and learn a little more, click through to these resources to help learn more about it, and participate in the dialogue. Come on out, leave a comment, let us know what you think, and thank you very much for taking the time to learn about education technologies here on Emerging Ed Tech.